great. Are my eyebrows in line? <laughs> gonna be no surprise <laughs> yeah the gift that I would want everyone 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 to receive is the, the gift of the brilliance of their own creature body and a story springs to mind told by Gabrielle Ross of a, a rabbi who asked his father who was also a rabbi on his deathbed. Father, what will you miss most when you go? Expecting that his father would say, you know, the Torah or his family or and his father said, My body. Yeah. It's because the body you know, we all have one. Um I think I've said it already it, it it connects us with the earth and therefore connects us with the universe and another quote that came to mind this morning was from a child in a book called uh, conversations with the children of now a particular young person whose name i forget but he's i think he was 11 when he said it he said you can sit your whole life in a meadow and know exactly what is going on in the universe just by being willing to know what is going on in you and that that's for me that's a deep a deep penetration into this this because it feels and senses the whole earth and the whole earth feels and senses the universe. And for me, that is spirituality. You know, there isn't, I've kind of got, gotten, gone beyond this idea that there's physicality, you know, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual. I mean, yes, maybe they are there, but the goal is the intimacy of them all with each other. And the, the, so anchored in here, anchored on her, I get to go anywhere. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I would want children to not sit at their desks all day. I would want mums and dads, or dads particularly, to not sit at their computers all day. <laughs> have legs, <laughs> you know, have body, we'll move. We'll sing, we'll dance, we'll garden, we'll do lots of stuff, but a lot more than this, please. You know, this has a place for sure, but we've just got seduced into thinking it's the most important place, and, and I just don't agree. So the first thing that happens when I wake up is I, um, I stretch. I have a deep enjoyment of being in a physical body and, and being in a soft bed under covers. And I like to sleep alone and spread out. And so my body gets full permission to move and stretch and undulate. Actually, it's when my spine starts waking up. And I know that as long as my spine is happy and fluid, kind of everything works. Yeah. What comes is that then I have a sense of humour. 
So there's a kind of playful creatureliness about my sort of first minutes before I um, sit up and usually just sit. Um, sometimes I listen to uh, meditation. Um, but it's, it's, it's about really landing, coming in, coming in. Because you know, I know a lot of us, you know, we wake up, or I wake up, and the habit pattern from childhood is to spring out my body into the day. What's the day? What needs to be done? And I'm, I'm really like on, on myself to stay in and down and in and down and quiet. Yeah, so I sit, I sit for 40 minutes-ish. And then have a shower, and a cold shower. And maybe then if it's a sunny day outside and stretching, or if it's not stretching somewhere inside where there's space. Yeah, so very towards me and my body and right. being still and quiet. And because partly because I enjoy that so much, I've made choices in my life to not be a mum, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I'm self-employed, so I can structure my time as I as I choose. And in the week, generally, I make sure that I get I go and garden for half a day. Not my own garden, uh, a local garden that grows vegetables or cologne, actually. Um, and then there's a couple of other regular um, commitments that I have during the week. But otherwise, yeah, as you say, what, what's the curiosity? What's the inspiration? So uh, repeatedly I see that I, you know, my left brain has an idea of, okay, so today you need to work on your website. But, you know, when I get to it, what I'm most curious about is this fantastic yurt that I saw. <laughs> so I go, I follow the curiosity and allow my curiosity and my, my juice, my creative juice, to, to lead me, really, through the day. Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because I love to be surprised, really. Mm. I love to not know what's, what's, what's going to happen. Yeah. A good friend said to me, yeah, two days ago, like, that she woke up in the morning and just had this spontaneous thought. I wonder what today will bring. And I really love, I really love that. It's, it is, you, some people would say that's a privilege, but it is also a discipline and an act of courage also. Because, um, yeah, come, you know, being self-employed in the northeast of Scotland doesn't bring, yeah, a huge income. And there's this profound dedication to being true, being authentic, being acting in integrity. And so there has, there has to be a trust that the right amount of monies will come in. Yeah, and so far that is the case. And I think that that connects with the body and an awareness into the body. You know, to be kind of living in the body rather than in the head. Yeah. Because then I can, we can feel the impulses that are saying, go over there or stop talking right now. Sit down, lie down. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm really, I am, I am a devotee of my body. <laughs> it tells me what to do. It really does. And you listen to it. And most of the time, <laughs> around my coffee addiction, I don't exact. Although I keep it to one, but there I know the places where I don't listen to it. But in in general, in 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 terms of you know what is what is on now, what is for mine to do right now then 
then I'm listening. It is, it's a kind of like an inner compass. Um, yeah, that, that gives me a direction and a, and a movement. But also, you know, when I'm aligned with it, also it, it gives me the words to say. I mean, none of us wake up with a script for the day, do we? So it's like, it's just the impulse to, for every now and moment, that come, it comes from here. It, it, it's like, when I'm most relaxed, the impulse comes from belly, like belly button and just below. And there's a, a relaxation in my chest also. My heart feels open and I feel soft. I know when I'm stressed, I know when I'm triggered because the impulse comes from a tighter place here and it usually feels tight in my throat and my voice goes up. So, <clears throat> and this, this, you know, in-body awareness is, is very much what um, is switched on when I'm with a client because I'm, I'm resonating with this body is resonating with their body even if they're on the screen it actually doesn't matter um, and then I can ask them you know how is it in your throat how is it in your chest and then they look and then they notice and then there's a deeper awareness with the with the wound essentially not, not yeah the wound and i'm also asking them to imagine their expanded state mm. what the body feels like when they're relaxed connect yeah. just connected with this this idea of like following uh, following the impulse and following the field, I think what got me really dedicated to listening to my body is that is the realization that on the inside of my skin, yeah, there's blood and enzymes and hormones and everything. Uh, one septillion process is happening now and now and now and now. That's a lot. And nobody's having a meeting. <laughs> there isn't a five-year plan. Mm. It's incredibly coordinated and, and in constant feedback with itself. So rationally, I think, well, if it is like that on the inside of my skin, isn't it like that on the outside of my skin? I did have an experience once, I call my inside out moment, where it suddenly, for about, I don't know, five minutes, I was everything. It's like what I call I right now, the interior, my sense of inside, suddenly took up everything that I could see. Everything was me. What freaked me out was that there was, therefore, nothing for me to do. I wasn't, I, little I, wasn't there anymore. It was one self-organizing incredibleness. <laughs> there was nothing for me to direct. <laughs> and at that point, I wasn't willing to relinquish <laughs> I'm sure there are, there are layers to it, but that realization, that that kind of sense of disappearing, um, I wasn't prepared for at that moment. And I shook myself back into a, I am here and the outside is there and we are different. But um, that was maybe 17, 18 years ago. And gradually I, I stepped closer to integrating that 
wider self as me which means then it becomes easier to allow that someone showing up in in my presence has got a message for me somehow is there for me they're causing me to feel something or say something or think something that is that I need to pay attention to It's not an accident that they're there. I really like this idea of, of synchronicity being um, the new government. Yeah, say a bit about that, synchronicity. It, it's kind of the same principles I mentioned, that the, bo you know, the body is self-organizing. We know that. We see that nature is self-organizing. So for me, synchronicity is the evidence of that self-organizing intelligence that is life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if we're really radical and we, and we get to the point of trusting ourselves to 100%, we're quite a long way from it right now, but we go, we're going in this direction. We don't need... Uh, a government to organize life <laughs> because life is by definition self-organizing what we do need to get better at is listening to how life self-organizes through us and trust trusting that it does so yeah. and does so through me and does so through you mm. yeah I, and I see that's where that's where the future is that's the evolution of, of humanity. I, have, I hold humanity in high regard, actually. I think we're incredibly courageous. Because um, what I'm talking about is definitely not what we were taught at school, right? And it's definitely not what we've got playing out right now. But we can all see that playing out right now is falling apart because it's not fit for purpose. So, yeah, I'm curious about, well, if that's not fit for purpose, what is? And you know, on the way to being plugged into self-organizing life, then I think we have you know, more uh, localized governance structures, which allow us to, to see that you know, everyone in a locale can be of service and be in joy of service in their location we can all contribute to make our locality work in terms of feeding each other and looking after the kids and collecting the trash and filtering our water, whatever it is that we need to do. We hum, humans can do that. Mm. It's almost like coming back into community. Very well. much so, yeah. Yeah, the, the the currency the currency of affection. That's that's uh, rocks. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the um, yeah, in community we we allow ourselves to be affectionate with more than just our blood family, which is really key. It's very key to this vision of, of synchronized life that, that we expand our sense of uh, belonging to, I mean, ultimately, the whole universe. But we can't self-organize in a location if we're all trying to defend our own nuclear families. You know, we have to <coughs> think of the whole community like we think of the ones who are closest to us. Mm, well, to be honest, we <laughs> culturally, I think we lost touch with our ground some generations ago. And um, the, you know, the, 
clearances one, are one example of people literally being cleared off their ground, off their land, and that happening the world over. And most of us are having in our family line the trauma of once feeling belonging to a piece of the earth and being taken from it or having to move from it for various reasons. So there's, there's huge, um, un, it's an undealt with, largely undealt with trauma in our collective, our, the, the, the grief around the loss of our intimacy with the earth through the place where we were born and the place where we had our community, I'm talking about before, generations ago. So it doesn't surprise me to see rising in a lot of my peers, well, not just my peers, um, a lot of people are saying that they want to live in community. <laughs> They've got no idea how difficult that is. But <laughs> yeah, necess that's a deep longing. And I think like bound up with that is a, a longing to, to live not just in community with other people, but in community with, with land. Because this, the, the ground we're on, it, it, you know, even my feet on, on this lovely grass in your garden, it's, it's connecting me with a nurture, the nurturance, the, the being I call Mother Earth. It's, it's a, she has a quality. She loves unconditionally. And it's a constant, and sometimes I feel it more than others, but it's a constant just upswell of, of profound love. It's very nuanced, and I, I don't feel it unless I'm really quiet. I definitely don't feel it if I'm thinking about what I should be doing or what I don't have. So this, like coming in and down into this piece of earth is how I feel the earth and how I feel our, how um, you started with the word power. The power is in my connection with the planet. My power stems from my connection with this planet. And then I can only feel it when I'm embodied. In fact, I don't really need to say very much to express this power when I'm embodied. Yeah. It's more like a pulse. <laughs>